Okay, on this video I have an old motor. It's actually a, what is it, a Crompton, Crompton Parkinson AC motor, Australia Proprietary Limited. No idea when this was made, could have been 40s, 50s, maybe later. But this one's got a bit of an interesting fault. I was originally told it was probably the motor start capacitor, which is this grotty looking thing here with a few dents in it. But it turns out, I actually talked to the guy that owned it, a, a neighbour dropped this into me. It's one of his friends, I've got to change a couple of caps on his, some of his machine motors. And it turns out it intermittently won't start and just sits there and sort of hums away and won't run at full speed. Of course, when I tried it a couple of times, it was fine. I actually disconnected the capacitor here to check it and it is high, like it's not dead yet. But that's a nice old machine, 120 microfarad, 400 volt, I think. Yeah, motor start capacitor, I think it says. Something capacitor co. Not sure what that is. Maybe United Capacitor Co. Limited, New South Wales, Australia. Hopefully not full of PCBs or anything toxic, but who knows. And yeah, the first terminal I pulled off actually broke the little eyelet thing off. So I've just got on a couple of leads at the moment, but I gave this a bit more of a run, and sure enough it does have an interesting problem. Let's see what happens when we start the thing up this time. And it's actually going backwards, making a lot of noise and going very slow. And now it's going forwards very slow. So at least it's demonstrating all its faults, because the first few times I tried it, didn't play up at all. Going backwards, but there's some sort of switch. I think a centrifugal switch in this back bit somewhere, and the bearings are pretty dodgy in this thing. So if I press that and it clicks, it should actually run after that. There we go. So it's actually running uh, around that way, so sort of clockwise from the back here. Even though it looks like it's, even though it looks like it's going the other way on the camera, you can possibly see it now. Yeah, it's rotating. To the right of screen and takes quite a while to slow down when it's been up to speed so i think what it is if we can slow it down i don't need a big screwdriver this one is dirt everywhere i've been using a screwdriver to stop it it's got quite a bit of play in the shaft and when it plays up i found that every time you press that in something goes click and it then works fine, otherwise it's a bit random, it can work quite a bit of the time, no problem. Worst thing about it, with no load on it, you know, slow it down a bit, unless it's cleaning the pulley off of all the grease. There we go, don't know if you can actually click it while it's running, yeah. I think this guy actually used his hand to try and get it going in. Nearly got a cord on the machine, so I said I wouldn't do that with this. Got a, it's got a lot of torque, and even just free running like that, there's a lot of inertia in it. Not sure what it says. No. Oh, BNP RPM volts amps 5.35, I think that is. Where's the horsepower? Oh, brake horsepower, I guess that is three quarter. So it's three quarter of a horse there, so horses are a reasonably powerful beast. So definitely not something to stick your fingers on, and especially not when you've got live wiring hanging off the back like I have, which is very dodgy. Don't do this at home. But I can put that, that cap was originally clamped on there. But we might get him a new capacitor anyway, because that is measuring about double on the ESR meter where it should. And yeah, great big dent in the end of it there. Now that has dents all over it, basically. Now yeah, it's actually not running at all. Don't I think I've seen that before. And yeah, get out of whack. And yeah, be super careful with these things. Keep your hands away from them. Keep tools that can catch on away from them. Keep loose clothing away from them. Long hair away from them, because these things We'll rip your scalp off if you're not careful. 
But I might see if he wants to actually pull this thing apart or not. Or whether he wants to do it, but I think it's going to need new bearings. Yeah, it's actually playing up really well tonight. This, when I first tried it, of course, didn't play up at all. If I just push that shaft in, away she goes again. So maybe it depends, you see the shaft is going in and out a bit there. Probably depends where it stops. And I guess each time, this might be the other reason, each time I do that, I'm actually pushing it out. So that's why it doesn't like to start at the moment. Of course, when I first tried it, I didn't, didn't bother stopping it like that. I think that's what made it play up more in the end. It was me using the screwdriver to stop it because I wanted to keep firing it again. And of course, when I do that, I'm actually pushing it out into the bad position. So I'm not sure what this thing has inside it. Whether the bearings are loose or whether there's something on the back end here that should stop it moving. But she's done plenty of work, which it probably would have by now, looking at the rust and dirt on it. Um, she's probably due for a bit of a rebuild. Looks like you've got to take this whole cast iron piece off the back. And usually you can get these covers off. Maybe there are screws under all that muck there. Are they actual screws? Oh, there are flathead screws in under there. Oh, that's a good sign, so we can probably have a quick look. Let's unplug it completely from the power. One of them's already loose, amazingly. That's one of the thing about all this oil all over it, or grease, or whatever it is. At least we can see something in there, not a lot. Old cork gasket. She's pretty oily in there, I think. Something glistening down in there. Where's my torch? Look at this, outright wet in there. So just that, there's some, oh it's meant to be pretty wet in there because it's actually got a bit of felt stuff in there to keep the bearing wet. It's obviously got a little oiler here on this bit. Pour your oil down there. But yeah, quite a, quite a bit of play there. I don't think I necessarily want to go any further into that, but there's no switch at the back here. Thought we might see the switch, but that's just the oiler for the bearing. Oh, there's our other little... That's where you put your oil in. That's what those little oil cans are used for, to squirt oil into that sort of thing. So that's just a little oil chamber. So in theory, you should be able to just slide this back bit right off. I personally don't want to pull a whole motor to bits if I can help it, especially if it needs bearings and stuff. But this guy is a bit of a... more of an engineer than I am. A bit more of a mess around with machines, so... I think we might let him do his own motor there. We can still get him a capacitor. Only problem is the other capacitors have like an open end on them. So just a couple of terminal 6.3 spades or something. So we'll have to make a bit of a case up for this thing, or at least seal up the end of the cap. But at some stage, I think replacing that could be a good move. Because again, it's going, it's a very old capacitor. It's measuring much higher than it should. Basically, you can measure these like a normal electrolytic capacitor. They should measure very similar using an ESR meter. And interestingly, my neighbour's one, his motor wouldn't run at all often with these things. If they're just sitting there humming, you can actually give them a spin if you're very careful. With these big motors, I wouldn't put my hand on them, but you can use a bit of wood or something, and usually that'll get them going. They'll sit there and hum, but his one would not go. But once I measured it, it was measuring high, and then a little bit of smoke actually came out of the capacitor to prove it beyond all doubt. And we pinched one off another one of his motors, and that got that machine going. And now he's got another machine... I forget what it even was, some sort of woodworking machinery, and that's got a dud capacitor on it as well. It was actually turned out to be exactly the same capacitor, and as soon as we actually opened up the end on the cap, 
you can see the rust on the little thing, the plastic case. Clip on in, pull that out, and it just all fell to bits. And basically tore off the terminals and stuff, so she was well and truly shot that one. But anyway, I think that's probably the most I do with this one, but it's just interesting all the different... It either stalls or it goes forward slow, it goes backwards slow. But you press on the shaft, and something in there goes click. Which I assume is the centrifugal switch, which is basically designed as the motor speeds up. The centrifugal force of the motor makes a part move outwards and press a switch. I think they, they, they're closed in when they're stopped. And then once they get up to speed, they, the part of the, on the shaft here slides backwards, disconnects the switch, which disconnects this capacitor and the start winding. You've got all your different winding connections in the end here. A bit hard to see, but some of these motors, you can hook them up different ways, depending on what you want them to do. But there's definitely, where those clip leads go in is the start winding. One of the others has got the neutral on it. There's also a wire going in straight off the active, which will be the main run winding. But sometimes they've got like two windings you can put in series and parallel. And depending whether you want torque or speed, I think some of them you can even reverse. Even though they're an AC motor, they are reversible. But without any information on this particular one, I wouldn't know what is what. But probably if you're an electrician or something that works with these sort of things all the time, you have a good idea of what the windings are and how to hook them up. But anyway, that was something a bit different. At least we sort of diagnosed what's going on with it. So thanks for watching.